Hey, Shauna Karish here with another Ask Shauna Answer. Okay, so this one, it comes from Maribeth, and she says, I have a five-year-old off-the-track uh, thoroughbred gelding. I love the thought of Liberty work and figured this was a wonderful way to connect on a deeper level with my horse. I'm on the Liberty leading stage of clicker training. I listen to your podcast. My question is, what do you do if the horse has aggressive behavior? We have two off the track thoroughbred geldings, a mini horse and a donkey. While working with my horse, a dog walked by the fence. Luther immediately charged the fence, ears pinned, teeth bearing. We don't have stalls, just a paddock and pasture. When this happened, I immediately said game over and put him away. He came from a rescue facility when turned out he was bottom of the pecking order. At our house, he runs the place. He'll bite and lunge at other horses and dogs with my husband and I right there. When starting clicker training, he did wonderful. Our first few times at Liberty Lead and was so awesome. It was almost like he already knew what to do. And mind and mind you, our dogs are walking around us just like today. Today, he began to act aggressive towards me, bobbing his head, tight jaw, nipping, ears back, pushing me. When he'd soften and looked away, I would reinforce. But when the dogs walked by, he took the opportunity to be aggressive. I want to continue with this, but I don't know where, I don't want to continue down the aggressive path. Um, behavior path. So what do you suggest I do? Our dogs have always been around and even go out on the trail with us. The dogs being around uh, wasn't out of the ordinary. Okay, Maribeth, that's a great question. And what you're seeing, and, and it makes sense with this history and everything. So what you're seeing is a bit of, um, it's kind of like resource guarding, really. So he, it sounds like probably where he was, um, being bottom of the pecking order, he didn't get the, he didn't get access to the resources like the others did. So it became a scarcity. It became something that was very valuable and very important to him. And so he learned, and, and there was nothing he could do about it. He just had this where he couldn't get there, you know, and then he learned this way to change that. And so now at your place, he's top of the pecking order and he's busy telling the others he's he's learned how to get the resources he didn't used to get so this boldness came and and it worked for him so now he is getting reinforced so when he goes to eat and everybody's around and he says no don't eat and they all run he's like well that worked and so he's learning how to do that i imagine with the positive reinforcement what he's getting is a little bit of that resource guarding and feeling like, I really like this. I want to do this. This is my thing and my people. And he is feeling a little bit uh, threatened by everybody and wanting to protect those resources. So what you want to do is you want to change that. So uh, there is my horse, Murray. He's an off the track thoroughbred and he like your guy and he just turned seven. Cause I mean, you know, technically he's not really seven yet, but technically all the thoroughbreds they turn the next year and he would be seven now we're in january and he he has a problem with space so his thing isn't so much the food as it is he doesn't want horses dogs in his space and it's very clear he feels threatened by horses very easily even the dogs there's one dog here that actually uh, you know chases him at the fence when he was like in a paddock and so he feels very you know, concerned for his own safety and for his protecting his space. So, and I'm sure with the racetrack, he probably got smooshed and, th and he has a thing with space. So I have to, what I do with him, I'm busy saying when the other horses are near, I try to figure out where is that threshold. So if I can have another horse 10 feet away and he's okay, or 20 feet, and it sometimes is different for other horses that have that he has a history with. There's some he's less tolerant, and some he's much more tolerant. But I start where I can figure where is that threshold, and as they're approaching, but still out of that threshold where it starts to trigger him, I reinforce as the approach is happening, as the horses say, I reinforce, 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 and basically what I'm doing is classically conditioning hit the exposure to the other ones being around. So in when the dogs are coming up, reinforce him a lot. So he learns when the dogs come up, I get reinforced a lot. But what I try to do is find a behavior that is a constructive behavior. So you don't want him pinning his ears and snarking at the dogs and then you just start feeding him because then he's like, well, that's how that works. That's kind of what he's already learned, it sounds like, around feeding time since he's learned how to be the top of the pecking order. So what you want to do is get it where he 
even if you just have to use target, say, hey, can you touch the target? And as he touches the target, you're giving him something constructive to do. Reinforce that a lot as then the dog comes up. You can even work with your husband and say, okay, now bring the dog up. And sometimes having, you know, and so you can do it where you keep it, but you turn him away. Let's say he's good until 10 feet. And that 10 feet starts to change while he comes up and then he turns at 10 feet, but you can reinforce and he can walk a circle with the dog. And then he comes to nine feet and then he comes to eight feet and then he comes to seven feet. But you got to pay attention and, and let it take time. It's going to take, it's taken time to develop. It's going to take time to form the new habit, but it is counter conditioning and classic conditioning. Uh, well, counter conditioning probably in this situation and systematic desensitization because he's finding that, like I said, the presence of the others is going to threaten his resources and his access to things that he needs to survive. And he's learned how to change that and do it differently. So what you want to do is set it up and that he starts learning when they're nearby is when lots of good things happen. And pretty soon they'll want to be near the dogs in a good way and not a bad way. And they'll also realize I get lots of resources when the, the dog is here. The dog doesn't threaten me and my resources. And as they do more of the positive reinforcement, we become classically conditioned. We become a resource in the way. So you need to kind of work that out a little bit where he uh, learns that, the, the, the dog isn't a threat. They're not taking away your uh, your attention or your focus or any of those pieces. Another thing that we did with the marine mammals, we all had they were they all lived in a social order. They have a hierarchy. They have you know their own thing within there where you have the one that displaces everybody else and is the one who pushes everyone away, and then you have the ones that are kind of. Like, you know, I'm just the lowly guy. I don't really care. I, I'm the one who gets displaced. So what we would do a lot of times when we're working with them, I will get uh, the the top one. This is what I do. So let's say here is the dominant sea lion who's the mature one, and he's the bull who's going to chase away the little young guy. So I will sit there and... I feed the little one, but I'm making eye contact with the big one. I feed the little one, then I feed, 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 feed. Feed the little one, feed, 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 feed. So they start learning that the other one eats and I get to eat more. So instead of chasing and displacing, they learn that once they let them eating, I get to eat more. But you need to figure out how can you have that happen successfully. You don't have my ear because then they're just going to go toe to toe. But, you know, maybe your husband comes up and feeds a little bit, and then you feed a lot, and then a little bit, and then until you can do it, we figure out the distance. So there's a lot to it. It's a great subject because I think separations, it's the first thing the marine mammals learned was how to do separations, which meant we're addressing their social hierarchy. We're, we're addressing their social displacement and all of that and teaching them how to, to deal with those components and stationing and, uh, and the stationary targeting is another thing that can be a great thing to do. So if you maybe work Luther by a stationary target, once he knows how to do it, you can then say, okay, I want you to, here comes a dog, go to the target and then go reinforce him. But you give him, you start teaching him an alternative behavior and make it more reinforcing to go to that target than it is to go chase the dog. So that gives it something very specific and a lot of clarity in that. So I do like that component quite a bit. So teaching that would be a good thing. One other idea I have is this is a cheap way to make a little paddock where you can work others, where you can work them individually. Because ideally, you can teach the targeting all by himself. So he learns and gets good with the target with no threat of anybody around him. He's like, this is my space. This is what we're doing. And then, and then you can switch it and put the others in and then go out and do him on the outside. But you can have stationary targeting and get it where he's like, I love this. I know this. I've learned it without the threat of others. And then when the, when a situation gets a little bit, when it's something you work towards and say, okay, now you're going to, we're going to work on your targeting and we're going to have the others walk by on the outside of the fence or whatever it might be that you can work on. But a way to create a nice little safe, and singular uh, space is, you know, those push in um, electric fence posts is you just get those. They're, they're pretty cheap and you can get those. You can put it in your pasture, out of your pasture and you can. So sometimes I put them just outside where I take them outside and then I use white electric tape, but it's not electric, but they, they don't, they're not really it's not a turnout, you know, that I just, it just makes a nice little contained place where you can kind of keep the others out or the one in. 
and create some space for you without being encroached upon by the others while you build this reinforcement history quite a bit. So I think that those are the things I would do. I think you did perfectly when you said, you, this is too much. You're, you're being too much. I'm going to take my toys and go home. And that I think that that is a good thing to do because it's a safety issue. So if he starts getting where he's, he's kind of getting snarky and not safe to be with and too tense, it's good to say, I'm going to take this out of it. We're going to work this in shorter sessions and rebuild this with short, positive sessions. And working him by himself, I think, will help quite a bit to be able to work on that relaxation. <clears throat> Excuse me, I did nuts earlier. And another thing that's good about the uh, creating that little fenced area that can be a temporary in and out, easy to set up and take down, <clears throat> is it's a way you can even work with protected contact a bit. So he could be inside the circle and you could be outside the circle and then you could work on the liberty leading and if he got kind of in a snarky place, you're kind of in a protected place where you can step away for a moment and then come right back and get to it when you feel like he's settled. So, I mean, there's a thousand things to do. So I'm only touching the tip of the iceberg, but these are some ideas that may help you quite a bit. So I, I, I appreciate it. I think it's a great one. And I want you to keep me posted because I think uh, if you have more questions as you go along, I want to be here to help you with some answers and some solutions for things because there's a thousand roads to roam. So there's more than one way to do things. So it's trying to figure out the best way for your herd and your horses. Okay. Thank you, Maribeth. And um, if you or anybody else has more questions, you can go to askshauna.com or you can go to my yeah, askshauna.com, which is on my, is it .com? Or you can go to my website, which is uh, on-target-training.com. And on there, there's a podcast page. There's a Ask Shauna page. There is, um, and we're posting, some of the videos will be posting up there as well, as well as you can go to my Facebook page, which is Ask Shauna on Target Training. Okay. There you go. And also, if you want to learn more about what we're doing um, here out here where I live at Terra Nova Training Center, it's a positive reinforcement training center, you can also go and sign up for our mailing list or our newsletter at terranovatrainingcenter.com. So if you want to learn more about what we're doing here, or the workshops are going on or where we're going or what we're up to, that's a great place to get connected. Also going to my website, which will help you give you some of the resources for the Ashtonas and et cetera. <laughs> anyway, until next time, enjoy getting your horse on target. Bye.